what's your educational background? Mm -hmm. What were you doing before this, before the way Sears movement yep. sort of, you know, how did you get here? how did I get here? Right. Uh, so I was a very artistic kid and I wanted to actually, uh, basically when I was done with high school, I wanted to go play at a piano bar in Australia. Like the, I just, I play for tips. I would love to just sing and play the piano. And that was my happy place. But I had parents and guidance counselors who said, no, you're off the charts in terms of your mathematics abilities and you're a genius and it would be just a uh, shame to throw it away on art and music. You know, you should go into uh, something that really challenges you like engineering. And I listened to them and I ended up in, you know, doing computer engineering as an undergrad. And uh, to be honest with you, I hated it, but I could do it. I was top of my class, but I hated it. When I got out of there, I was recruited by Microsoft Research because they looked for the most innovative thinkers they could find and somehow they caught me on campus and did a little interview with me, which basically was a riddle. And when they saw like how quickly I could solve problems, they were very enamored with me and they brought me to Redmond and then took me through this gauntlet of riddles and you know, I was hired into Microsoft Research and got to work on some cool massively multiplayer video games and things of that sort before there really were many massively multiplayer video games. This was back in the 90s. And when I saw that, well, wait a second, if Bill Gates's path to success was being an entrepreneur, that's what I had to have the courage to do. So I became an entrepreneur and I had this vision of creating this like Neo Camelot, this like this company that would use the money and power and resources it developed as a company to <clears throat> make things better for the world, to do good things in the world. And I thought this was like this revolutionary idea of like this business that existed for the betterment of humanity. And my first client ended up being Ben from Ben and Jerry's. It took me weeks to get around to reading his biography and discovering like he is the grandfather of socially responsible business. And, and I just happened to be working directly with him. So I quickly asked him to mentor me. And that was the beginning of my awareness though. There's this tribe of people who march the beat of a different drummer and do quite well and can do amazing things for the world when they trust their hearts. Because watching Ben, Ben is a free thinker. He is a free person. And then my son was born. And when I discovered like he's the same way that Ben is, that Bill Gates is, that I'm starting to discover all these great entrepreneurs are, that's when I realized, oh, okay, you know, I need to start communicating uh, this message that everything that I thought was wrong with me growing up actually turned out to be the very strengths that great entrepreneurs and leaders and innovators uh, uh, cultivate in themselves. So, you know, there we have it. Uh, I felt like we needed to kind of get this message out. So I wrote my first book, The Da Vinci Method. The other thing I wanted to ask you was, did you complete your own education uh, along well, no. your own journey? No, in fact, uh, it's interesting. I, <laughs> now this was before I even like really consciously discovered turn on tune in drop out which was actually given to me in a dream the drop out part of it really is important my fifth year in college computer engineering major all i had is a semester left to graduate and i said to myself dropping out takes a certain kind of boldness and courage it's like burning the bridge behind you it's like you can't go back that kind of idea and so i consciously chose in my last semester to drop out. And I remember having that conversation with my father and he's like, no way in hell. You stay in school. You're almost done. Don't do this. And I was like, it's already done, dad. I'm starting a business right now. I'm dropping out. <laughs> and, and I was wildly successful in that business, a great business, very successful. One thing I do want to make clear with people is although I started a multi-million dollar company, I didn't keep that money. When the company got to a, it was actually doing quite well and we had the opportunity to grow even more. My son was nine months old and I never saw him. Like I really didn't see him for the first nine months of his life because I was working 80 hour weeks or more, just getting the, just driving this business. And I had to make a choice at that point in time, whether to grow the business and possibly lose my family or to step away. And so I said to all of my employees at the time, I said, listen, we got a choice. We can either take this new bigger contract 
or we basically have to just liquidate the place. And that's what we ended up choosing to do. Everyone was so burned out. Nobody wanted to sort of take the reins of the company. And I knew that it was a devil's bargain for me to keep doing it. It was seductive because you get the power and the money and whatnot, but there was something more important. And that was my love for my child. And I almost got sucked into that. I, I did manage to walk away with it, wake, walk away from it. But in order to walk away from it, even the people who want to acquire my company said, well, you got to keep working there. Sure. And I was like, no, I can't do that. That's a devil's bargain. And I, so they offered me millions of dollars, but I got to keep working there. And I said, no. So I basically torched the place. You know, all the money basically went out to the employees as they left. I mean, for the last, you know, couple months there, we had people kind of still on the payroll that weren't doing much except for finding another gig. And, you know, I walked away with just enough to live for uh, two or three years and find sort of the next thing I was kind of called to do. But people go, oh, you know, you're, you start a multi-million dollar company. Why are you charging people for books or whatever? I, because I, I can't afford not to, you know? Uh, and people say, well, I, look at this, I understand. you know, another thing people would say, like, look at this um, video you made. You obviously, to have, someone literally said, this guy obviously took funding from Goldman Sachs and hired a, a Madison Avenue advertising firm to make this video. Don't subscribe to his bullshit. <laughs> And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I made the video in this basement right here. I went broke again doing it. Like, it took me months of my time. I'm there on the computer pushing that mouse, doing it myself. I had no funding whatsoever. At the end, I did have the audacity to say, hey, like, could you support the movement? Could you, like, you know, maybe give us a few bucks and we'll send you a book. And if you can't afford the book, we'll still send you one. 